Warning, this video contains minor spoilers for the Solar 175 campaign. Now, with an enormous campaign and an endlessly changing and evolving universe to play within, there is no doubt that Solar 175 is a beast of a board game. This video is aimed to give you a little history into the design of this heavy Euro legacy game and for you to learn more about the decisions and work that went into its creation. It is not going to teach you all the rules of the game, but is instead more focused on the decisions that went into building the gameplay, world and components, and ultimately to give you a feel for everything that makes Solar 175 what it is. The origins of Solar 175 lie in the world building process behind it. World building is a fascinating art and something we have talked about in much more detail in other videos. But essentially, it is a technique creators use to create vast fictional universes within which to set their narratives. We have been avid world builders for a long time now, and the idea behind Solar 175 was to create a game within one of our worlds to build the underlying universe and then create a gaming system where the players themselves could generate the narratives of this universe. Early on, we decided to create a game set within a futuristic sci-fi universe, heavily inspired by the wonderful Mad Adam trilogy by Margaret Atwood, along with many other great sci-fi writers who feature in several little Easter eggs within the game. We started to play with the concept of a world where corporations have started to supplant national governments as the prime possessors of power. In addition to this, we began to think about what the world will look like as we start to settle the solar system. With Elon Musk's SpaceX claiming to be able to land humans on Mars as soon as 2026, this has a definite not too distant future feel about it. We set the game in a world where the solar system was in the final stages of settlement. The inner planets are beginning to be terraformed and some humans are enjoying the vast wealth and resources the solar system has to offer. There are many games and stories set in futures where we have settled vast swathes of the galaxy, worlds where we visit new planets and meet strange aliens on a daily basis. But for this game, we wanted something a little earlier and closer to current reality. A universe only one solar system wide. A universe that feels close enough to our own reality to give decisions made within it an immersion and importance they could otherwise lack. And so the universe of Solar 175 was born. After many, many more world building sessions where we discussed the history, cultures and feel of our brave new solar system, we had the basis of the dark dystopia we wanted to create. The game is set 175 years after a cataclysmic event known as the Unspeakable War. The causes and specifics of this tragedy are not clear, but its effect is felt everywhere, like an ever-present background radiation. To avoid spoilers, we cannot go into much more here, but the important thing to know is this. There is a whole lot of world to explore in Solar 175. In the process of world building, we started to put together short stories and timelines from our world. One of the early elements of this was the creation of a magazine, a digital artifact from this future. This magazine contains detailed descriptions of the city of Yurishi, the largest mega city on Earth. It has interviews with political activists and even advertisements from the mega corporations in control of everything. This magazine became such a useful tool to embed us in the world of Solar 175 that a physical copy of it actually made its way into the game. Players will all receive a copy of this magazine to learn more about the world they are playing in. This tool immerses you in this world in a much deeper way than would be possible without it. If you'd like to see the current prototype version of this magazine, a copy is available in the description to this video. At this point, we had a whole solar system to explore, but nothing to do this with. So we set to work creating a game to go with our universe. Early on, we decided that this game must have several key elements. Firstly, it would be a big box game with Euro-style strategic gameplay. We decided that players would play as owners of corporations in this dystopia vying for control of the resources within the game. I'd recently been playing the excellent Papers, Please by Lucas Pope, and the idea of a tabletop empathy game was very appealing. 
Solar 175 would be a game where players would be put into difficult ethical situations and there would be no hand-holding as to how they could proceed. This led to the decision to include a campaign with legacy elements in the game, but with a twist. We love legacy games, but are often frustrated at the destruction they promote of the game. Whilst this does have its place, giving a real feel of permanence and importance to decision making, the overuse of this can lead to components feeling cheap and ultimately the game itself feels disposable. We wanted to retain the skin in the game feeling of the legacy mechanic, but with an emphasis on the gradual improvement of the game rather than the slow destruction. The world of Solar 175 gets bigger and better the more you play. And essentially, no matter how many times you have played the game, we want your last game to be the best. Many different core mechanics were tried at this point. We tried an action selection mechanic that didn't make its way through the first playtest, a card drafting mechanic which did only a little better, and a deck building mechanic which did okay but still didn't feel quite right. Eventually, we switched this to a bag building alternative. Inspired by the classic Euro game Orléans, we had the engine of the game be a series of workers you could hire and assign to jobs on your own player board. They would then go on leave before being recycled back to your bag again. This felt very thematic and it immediately became obvious that it was the core that Solo 175 was looking for. Another early addition to this was the inclusion of area control as a mechanic. Inspired by the classic El Grande, we split the solar system up into six different zones and each of these could be controlled by different players for victory points at the end of the campaign. This had a very thematic feel and contrasted nicely with the bag building. Bag building is a deep strategic mechanic where you grow in power over the game but it sometimes lacks in player interaction. The area control mechanic worked in reverse to this adding in some deep player interaction to the game that could otherwise be lacking. Following on from these core mechanics, we started to build out possibilities based on the theme, some of which made it through playtesting and others did not. We initially included a space junk mechanic, where players would release waste into the solar system the more they travelled through it, and they could spend time to clear this up or allow it to build up, affecting all players. The idea was to create an example of the tragedy of the commons dilemma. Essentially, the idea that when a resource can be exploited equally by all, the incentives of those involved lead to the resource quickly becoming degraded and useless to all. This idea sort of worked in that most games ended with vast amounts of space junk blocking the solar system up, but this also made the game less enjoyable. The more you played, the more clogged up the world became. We want games to allow you to explore more as the game goes on, not less. Similarly, we had to remove a mechanic where players would pay in time for the amount they moved across the vast distances of the solar system. This was intended to add more realism to the game, as players would have to consider long journeys very carefully. However, again, it limited the sandbox style freedom we wanted players to feel from the gameplay. And However we tried it, it always ended up feeling a little clunky and unthematic. Some mechanics, however, worked fantastically. We added an option to conscript your workers to the UFSS peacekeeping force. This huge military body claims a monopoly on violence across the solar system, and being able to influence this political force felt very thematic in this dystopian world. It also allowed for an interesting mechanic where the state of the military at the end of the game would influence how the game was scored. This was an important element for us as we wanted each game to feel very unique and the constantly shifting victory conditions does this brilliantly. Another unique aspect of Solar 175 came from the election mechanic we developed. There are several political parties in the Solar 175 universe. The party in power at the end of the game would also have a large impact on the final outcome of the game itself. We spent a very long time perfecting the voting mechanic for Solar 175. Early on we tried giving players voting cards, which would create a voting deck, or having voting tokens, which could be placed onto cards belonging to the relevant political parties. Ultimately though, what worked best was the creation of a physical ballot box and voting tokens. Players could tick the box of the political party of their choice and then secretly add their vote to the box. 
the use of lobbyists allowed players to vote multiple times, and as the campaign progressed, players would gain the option of using bribery and even spoiling their votes to increase the chances of their favoured political party achieving success. Plus, voting feels and sounds great, but I'll talk more about the component choices a little later. The campaign of Solar 175 was made to be impossibly vast. You can continue to play and explore endlessly, and the game will continue to grow and evolve right along with you. The game begins with a campaign mode, which will lead to you unlocking all the important elements of the gameplay and introduce you to the game world, but after this is completed, you'll only have scratched the surface of what you can see and do in this universe. Once we were happy with the base gameplay of Solar 175, we began to think in more detail about the components of the game. Tabletop games are fundamentally tactile experiences, and so the choice of materials, art and design have a huge impact on the overall player experience. So next up, I'm going to share some of the key component-related decisions we made for Solar 175. First off, miniatures. These had to feel substantial and unique. Players would be buying and using new ships throughout the campaign, and so we wanted ships that looked individual, varied in size, and really brought the expanding and evolving map of the solar system to life. And we're really pleased with the final results. Then there's voting. For the voting mechanic, we added a large punchboard ballot box to the game. Its artwork is designed to look futuristic and impenetrable, but with a worn, used effect to add realism. The top is hinged to allow easy access to the votes at the end of the game, but the voting tokens themselves will be placed through this central slot. We also raised the base of the box slightly off ground to give this satisfying clunk each time a vote was added. Next up, the double-sided player boards. We invested a lot of time in creating these, being central to the action mechanic of the bag building, Players would spend a good amount of time focused on their individual boards, and so we wanted their workers and cubes to slot satisfyingly into this command centre. The reverse side of the board also contains some of the key legacy elements of the game. For example, where players will record their victories and even win permanent awards. Next is the biodome bases. The Hensler biodomes players can build throughout the game are these colourful translucent domes. Inspired by the glass components from Viticulture, they have a solid quality feel to them, and as they spread out throughout the solar system, they add to the feel of a vibrant living ecosystem being jointly created by the players themselves. Then we considered backer rewards. For the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition of the game, we wanted to upgrade some components to reward people who made the game a reality. To do this, we thought that a rough sci-fi gunmetal would work best. We developed a series of tokens to enhance the game from a metal megastructure token to represent the giant space infrastructure project players could use within the game, to an upgraded double-sided election token which would help denote the current political power in the solar system. We also put together an enamel pin emblazoned with the UFSS logo. This would be given to the winner of the campaign as a permanent reminder of their exceptional brilliance. And of course, the artwork. The artwork of Solar 175 took a long time to complete and comes from many talented artists. The essence is that it's a whole solar system in a box, and we wanted that to be reflected. The magazine, for example, is designed to feel like a real artefact from a dystopian future. There are images that approach photorealism intertwined with evocative artwork designed to embed you in a deep, immersive experience. As you've probably guessed, this is a big game, and so the artwork needed to have a similar epic feel and convey the true nature of the world behind the game. These images from the very talented Adam Beachy are a great example of the artwork reflecting the dark dystopian reality of Solar 175. Lastly, narratives. As the campaign progresses, the solar system you play within will develop and evolve in a unique way, depending on the choices you make within each game. This will correspond with detailed narratives and short stories where you'll meet interesting characters and learn more about the world around you. It is hard to describe the power of these narratives, and so I think the best option would be to provide you with just one example from the countless narratives included in the game. Do you think we are responsible for the things we do in our dreams? 
I feel so guilty, and yet I know none of it is real. What is it inside me that made me dream it? These were the first things that Zara said when she sat up in the couch in Dr. Obu's office. Obu had only recently transferred from Earth to practice on Europa, but Zara's words did not come as a surprise. Already at least half a dozen of his confessors, as he liked to call them, had said similar things. Obu was a dream counsellor, and somehow off-world dreams were different. They seemed to probe a deeper level of the subconscious mind that, he began to suspect, was interconnected. Here, he hoped, was the first direct scientific evidence for a collective unconscious. But why only here? What was it about the separation from Earth, the disrupted sleep, the low-G environment, that had opened the doors to this hitherto hidden realm? Before I answer your question, I'm going to ask you a few of my own, if that's okay. He asked, and Zara slowly lay back and closed her eyes, nodding resignedly as she did so. Through the large astro light above the couch, the dull glow of Jupiter was visible as it rose over the dark edge of Europa. Obu needed something more specific, something that unarguably connected Zara's experience to that of Tintin, Charlie and Bo. Tell me who was there and what you did in the dream, he said. Oh, I'm so ashamed of it. Solar 175 is coming to Kickstarter on March the 1st. I've copied a link to our campaign in the description below, and if this sounds like it could be of interest to you or your gaming group, then we'd love it if you would check it out and help us make Solar 175 a reality. Bye!